Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 3 of Horizons is out, and it's titled, As Long As I'm With Sprigatito. Continuing from the end of last episode where the explorers kidnapped Sprigatito, this episode, Liko is trying to find her beloved Pokemon. How will she be able to do it? Let's find out. We get new information here about the Rising Gold Tacklers that we didn't get before, and that's that Liko's mom actually hired them as bodyguards to protect Liko. That explains why they were looking for her in the first episode and how they found her. However, there still remains a lot of questions. Mainly, if Liko's mom knew something like this was gonna happen, why did she send Liko out with a pendant like that? What's the history behind Liko's mom and these people? What's the history behind the pendant? So many questions are raised by this one revelation so far, and the series has done that type of reveal really well in every episode so far. After after waking up in the airship, Liko finds out that while Freed wasn't able to find exactly where they took Sprigatito, he did find the towns that the explorers landed on, so they need to go look for it over there. We learn a bit more about the Voltacklers here. Freed seems to be the leader, Murdoch is the cook of the group, Orla is the mechanic, and Molly is the healer as she has Liko go fetch her a bunch of potions once they land in the town. While in the Pokemon Center, a girl comes in distressed about her Pokemon who was hurt due to her not commanding it properly and Liko realizes that it isn't just her who has those fears of being in any training. As Nurse Joy completes her order and gives Liko multiple boxes of stuff, another woman comes out of a store nearby and Murdoch's Rockruff smells the scent of Liko's Sprigatito on her. That woman, by the way, is named Konya. I don't think we heard the name in the episode, but since they're going to be recurring, I thought I would just mention it here. The bigger guy of the group is named Sir. Liko begins chasing Konya, who calls Amethio while running, and Amethio tells her to bring them to the warehouse. Meanwhile, Zer puts some sort of tracking device at the bottom of our ship for our heroes, which sets them up to be recurring villains since they can now track our heroes. Liko arrives at the warehouse where Konya went to and is ready to go, but Freed stops her. Instead of going in guns blazing, they come up with a plan. That plan includes Freed playing to Amethio's ego and challenging him to a battle. A very nicely animated battle, I might add. Meanwhile, Liko uses uses Rockruff's nose to find where Sprigatito is. Once she finds it, she breaks in a door to save it and the two get out only to be stopped by Konyo who's outside. I haven't mentioned this yet, but Konyo finds Sprigatito really cute and thinks they'll become the best of friends. However, that isn't just randomly. Sprigatito has been playing her to a certain degree by acting cute to her to get more food. So when she calls Sprigatito's name and it turns away, she's devastated. She then brings out her Skarmory to stop the grass type, however, Liko and Sprigatito are more confident now because of their experiences together, so she steps up and once again, Sprigatito makes a massive blast of Leaf Edge. It isn't to beat Skarmory in the battle, but it's to get away. And Freed, who at this point is at the top of the roof battling, sees Liko's Leaf Edge and her running away, which is his sign to jump off the building and say sayonara to Amethio and whisk away in his Charizard. Liko has officially saved her Pokemon. By evening, Liko's contemplating everything that her grandma told her in the past and how they're slowly starting to come true. She realizes that she's a trainer now because of Sprigatito. She then comes outside to where everyone is of the tacklers and she tells them that she trusts him now and she hopes to stay with them to figure out the mysteries of this pendant. They all agree and we also learn here that the Rising Volt Tackler's goal is to solve the mysteries of the world in Pokemon. Later, when she talks to Anne on her tablet, we also learn that Liko will be attending school remotely once it returns. That fixes the issue that arises with her just suddenly leaving to go on an adventure. However, first, the Rising Volt Tacklers have to go to Liko's house in Paldea to get the bodyguard fee from her mom. We then see Roy come out of his house and saying hello to his grandfather before running towards the beach. I can't tell what town that is, but I think it might be Paldea. The place he's running down looks a lot like the starting town in the game, and that would make sense if the Rising Volt Tacklers are going there next, and that's where we meet Roy. He finds the sale of the Brave Asagi, and that's where we leave off. I really like this episode. It was well balanced with action, plot, and moments of introspection from Liko. We still don't really have a hang of how this series is going to flow. I thought it was going to be episodic, which it might still be, however, so far the story is serialized. I guess once Roy gets introduced, we'll know about the real structure of the anime. One thing I do have to give this series so far is the animation quality hasn't dropped off at all. That might sound strange seeing how it's only the third episode, however, with Pokemon Journeys in 2019, by the time the third episode was out, you could tell the cracks in the production because the battle between the Gyarados and Tyrantar vs Pikachu was already looking pretty bad. This series seems to be faring much better, which is a good sign. I can't wait for Roy's story next, and as for this episode, I really enjoyed it. What did you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming, and that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Peace.